Hello my fellow artisans, welcome back to the Artisan Electrics channel. Once again you find me in a small cupboard, but this time one with lots of natural light, so that's good. We're changing a consumer unit today, and I've not done a consumer unit change video in a while, so I thought I'd try and talk you through my process of how I do it. Obviously everyone's got a slightly little different way of doing things, but leave me your thoughts in the comments about how you would do it. We're in this lovely historical property today. It's a beautiful cottage out in the middle of nowhere. One of our regular customers contacted me and said that basically they've got tenants moving in this week. They wanna get everything up to scratch ready for their new tenants. And these are the kind of landlords that we love basically where they give us free reign to get everything really nice. So she said, you know, I want it to be compliant with all the latest regulations. I want everything to be safe and good, ready for the new people to move in. So Corey did an EICR yesterday and he's tested all the wiring out. The wiring itself is in pretty good condition. There are a few little faults that we found which he's fixed. I've got a cooker switch to change today just to um, sort out that little thing, put, put a smoke alarm up and then really it's just the consumer unit change. Now you might um, wonder does it really need changing? It's a 16th edition consumer unit, it's plastic. It doesn't have RCD protection for the lighting circuits, but it does for the socket circuits. Technically, you could probably get away with leaving it in place. It's probably just a C3 on an EICR. There aren't any like major holes in it or anything like that. Uh, but as I said, the customer just wants everything to be done really nicely. So we're gonna put a Hager RCBO consumer unit in here with a surge protection device so that everything's up to scratch with the latest regulations and it's just safe and nice for the new tenants as soon as they move in, which actually is tomorrow. So um, I'm gonna just take this one down. Now at the moment, all the cables are coming down in trunking. So I'll show you that. Um, they're, it's a little bit tight. So we're gonna replace the trunking as it comes down uh, with a slightly larger 75 by 75 trunking. And we're fitting a bit of a fancy consumer unit today. You've seen probably Corey fitted one in that job where there was a fire, um, but I've not fitted one of these myself. It's the Hager Design 30 consumer units, which are a little bit more fancy than the Hager Design 10 that we usually fit. They're not that much more expensive, but they look a little bit nicer and they're a little bit nicer build. So I'll be interested to fit that today. Um, there's a few little things that are different with that consumer unit as well, so I'll show you those. As always, if you enjoy our videos, it helps when you hit a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed already, please do. You'll get regular video updates from us. Let's get into it. So we've got our main cutout fuse here, which is 100 amp, 25 mil tail, so that's all good, going into the meter and then out of the meter into the consumer unit. Now what I'm gonna probably do is fit some of the new flexi tails, so I'll terminate these into a Henley block and then put a new set of flexi tails into the bottom of the board. Um, there is no main isolator here, so we have no choice but to just pull the main fuse so that everything's safely isolated for us to work on. It's a TNS system, so you've got this uh, earth cable which comes off the sheath. It's one of those old lead, um, lead supply cables, quite ancient, and it's wrapped in this kind of oil tape stuff insulation. This is the main earthing conductor, and then from there you've got a main earth that goes up to the consumer unit. It feels like that's 10 mil, so we'll replace that with a 16 mil, and then all the bonding conductors are already in place coming out of the consumer unit here. At the moment we've got a main switch, we've got a circuit for downstairs lights rear, downstairs lights front, upstairs lights, then we've got an RCD which then protects these circuits. That's the cooker which we've taped off for the moment because that has a dodgy cooker switch which you need to replace. Downstairs ring circuit for the sockets, kitchen ring circuit for the kitchen sockets, upstairs ring circuit for the upstairs sockets, immersion heater, and that's just like um, an old PowerPoint for a tumble dryer in the garage which is no longer used. So um, yeah, that is the circuits. And as you can see up here, we've got this trunking so this is where all of the cables bar one, they all come down from above, which is really nice. It, it makes it a lot easier for us to do a neat job. But these trunkings are a bit tight. And so what we're gonna do is replace them with one large 75 by 75 trunking that all the cables will go in. And that'll just make it a little bit neater when everything butts up to the board. I might actually raise the consumer unit slightly higher as well to give us a little bit more length, depending on what length of cables we've got in here. 
So I'll isolate everything, take the main cover off, and then we'll start stripping this one out. So it's not the neatest consumer unit here, but I've seen a lot worse. The cables look fairly modern. It looks like they're LSF actually, which stands for low smoke and fumes because they've got this white insulation. Um, and essentially there's quite a lot of length in here. So that's helpful for us when changing a consumer unit. The only thing is the neutrals are quite short because they're on the left and the CPCs are on the right. Whereas in the Hager board, the neutral bar is on the right and the CPC bar is on the left. So that might cause us a problem, although we've got RCBOs, so these neutrals are gonna be coming straight out of the RCBOs instead. Um, so what I'll probably do is raise this up slightly so that, that gives us a little bit more length. What I like to do is prep the board first, get the ta tails connected in and stuff, um, and then strip this out and tidy all the cables up neatly in the right order, get them all nice and straight and stuff because it makes it a lot easier to dress them in neatly. As I say, all the cables are coming in the top apart from this one 2.5 twin and earth which comes in the bottom, um, which goes up in this trunking and there's quite a lot of length on that. So we can probably continue that up and then just take it into the bottom of the consumer unit with a compression gland. So that's fine. And what I do when I strip everything out is I just label everything up as I go as well so that I know what's what. Um, so I'm going to just put some tape on the cables or something or, or write on them so I know what's what when I come to connect everything back in. That's important, otherwise you get in a real confused mess if you're not careful. So yeah, I'm going to start stripping this out. <laughs> So um, these are the old tails. Now they're they're pretty long. They are they are long enough to go into the new board, but they're just really stiff. I don't really like working with these old style tails, so I think I'm just going to replace them anyway. Um, but I've disconnected them from the main switch now, and I'm just going to pull them out. They've stripped the insulation back quite far on them anyway, as you can see. Usually I leave it all the way up to the main switch because in a metal consumer unit, you need the tails to be double insulated, otherwise they're gonna to have to be RCD protected. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a thing. But we'll pull these out. And then all of these outgoing circuits now are all labeled up. As you can see, I've just written on them what the description of what the circuit does. So I know what's what, and I can literally just rip this off the wall now and um, then just start getting rid of this old trunking and tidying, tidying everything up. So this is slightly naughty what they've done here. They've twisted the earths together the CPCs and then put them in one sleeving, which makes it really difficult to do ring continuity testing. So I'm gonna untwist those now. Uh, they've done the same with this. I guess like some people think, oh, if I do that, then it makes it obvious which, which conductors are, you know, for each ring because they've twisted them together. But it just makes it impossible to do ring continuity testing at the consumer unit, so then you have to go and do it at the, the end points, like at the actual socket outlets or whatever. So, peel this lid off. So what we can do now is measure a nice length of 75 by 75 trunking, cut that off, butt the consumer unit up to it, mount it uh, to the wall. I'll have to cut a hole in the top of the consumer unit to bring the cables in with a bit of grommet strip. 
and then we can mount the consumer unit to the wall. It's a little bit crumbly, this wall. It's the old bricks, the old red bricks, which are quite soft, but uh, we'll get some good fixings on that anyway. I've got some quite long screws, so that should do the trick. It's surprising actually how thick a bunch of cables like this is, but those will fit nicely in the 75 by 75 trunking, so that will be absolutely fine. So this is our new consumer unit, slightly uh, narrower than the old one actually, but as you can see, it's quite a beautiful thing with this nice, this nice lid and everything. Um, but my thought process is that I want to raise this up as much as I can so that I've got plenty of length on these cables. So I also need enough space to get a compression gland in the bottom here for the tails. So that will stick down fairly far. So I need enough space to get that in and get the tails in neatly from below. Um, I can probably reuse these tails if I want to, but I've not decided yet if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do that or put a Henley block in. I mean, I could put a Henley block in here and then use flexi tails into the board, which will just enable me to terminate them a little bit easier. It doesn't add an extra joint in here, but it also means that they've got access then if they ever need to come off of it with a new board somewhere. Not that they probably would, because I've got plenty of spare ways in this one, but um, that's me just thinking out loud. So I reckon that is probably a good height, because that's going to give me enough length inside the consumer unit for all the cables to be terminated directly into the uh, breakers without me having to extend any of them. This one can go into the bottom of the board and it's going to be long enough to go to any breaker as well so that's perfect. I won't need to extend that one either. So I think that that is about the right height. Um, so what I'll do is get my level on it and then just make a line on the top so I know where the trunking needs to come to because the trunking is going to come straight down here and then I'm going to have to cut a hole in the top of the board here to bring all the cables in. So get it level roughly, draw a line on the wall here where the trunking will butt up to and then we'll do kind of a, a mark where the slot needs to be to bring the cables into. And then I can measure from that line up to the top to where the cables will come into the trunking. So it's going to be about 110 centimetres or 1,100 millimetres. That's about right, so I'll cut my trunk into that length, mount the trunking to the wall, strip these cables back, cut the holes in the consumer unit, mount that up, and then start dressing everything in. So normally I'd be using a larger hacksaw than this, but today needs must because I'm working out the Tesla still waiting to get a second van. Corey's got my main van and he needed the big hacksaw today. So it is what it is, we're using a miniature hacksaw. But I think it'll do a neat, neat enough job anyway. So now the trunking's in, these cables are in. What I've got to do is cut the slot in the right place to bring these cables into the consumer unit. So I reckon that is gonna be about right. And what I've got is a 40 mil hole saw somewhere. So I'll drill two 40 mil holes side by side and then with a jigsaw, I'll just cut out the extra bit so that it creates a nice sort of rounded edge slot. And then I will file it. I'll use my pen reamer as well just to, um, just to tidy that up a little bit. Then I need to cut a 40 mil hole in the bottom here as well for the tails to come in. And then a 20 mil hole in here to take that extra 2.5 twin and earth into the bottom. Once those holes are all drilled and everything, 
then I can mark the fixings up and drill the fixing holes on the wall, get it all mounted up and start tidying these cables up. I'm going to strip these back further so that they come, probably the sheaths will come just inside the consumer unit. I've not decided yet. I might even just take them inside the trunking because then it's even neater and easier to dress the cables. Um, but yes, yeah, nice and neat bunch of cables that, so should be fairly easy to dress these ones. So this stuff, a lot of people ask me about this on Instagram and stuff, this is edge trim. It's basically like designed for vehicles, but we use it as grommet strip for consumer units because it's really solid and really flexible. It's got these little metal bits inside, but it's super smooth and plasticky. I think I actually got this from someone like Bristol Sparky on Instagram, um, but it's been doing the rounds for a while. Various people have been showing it off and it is just so much easier and better to use than normal, the normal flimsy grommet strip that they send in the packets. So it looks really neat. It fits really snugly. It won't come out. So I like to use that as just a way to neatly dress the cables into the consumer unit. So that's our top entry. I'm going to do a 20 mil hole here for the twin and earth coming in the bottom and another 40 mil hole in the bottom here for the main tails coming in. And then we'll get this mounted on the wall. So we use these flexi tails. These are an absolute game changer. Basically they're, they've got a lot more strands than the normal tails that you, the traditional tails that you get. So they're a lot more flexible and it just makes it easier to terminate these neatly into the board because in general, the normal 25 mil tails are just super stiff. So these are really, really nice. And most wholesalers stock these now. So I would recommend if you're using tails, just use these. They're not much more expensive and they are absolutely so much better and easier to work with. Um, I'm gonna pre-terminate these tails into the consumer unit while it's on the ground. It's just easier to do it that way than trying to do it afterwards when it's already mounted on the wall. So using my whisker tails gland here, I'm just gonna feed the various tails in. Now, the in the main switch here, you've got uh, line conductor on the left and neutral conductor on the right. You can see that they're labeled up there. So I usually do the same order when I take them into the gland at the bottom. I take the line in on, on the left and the neutral on the right so that they sort of line up. Um, yeah, just a little tip for you. So this just goes in the gland. Slide these across a little bit to make some room and then just bring it in long enough to go into the main switch. Something like that. You've got this tails grip, cord grip here as well in this board which is an upgrade from the design 10 boards that we usually fit. So when I slide this main switch back, that's going to go through there. But I'll get the neutral in first as well. Just get them roughly long enough and then strip the ends with this. This is a brilliant tool. Nipex Ergo Strip, you can just twist it around the end of the tail once to get the first layer of insulation off and then a second time to get the second layer of insulation off. Same with this one. And I usually strip them back a little bit further than they need to be and then just trim them with these. These are brilliant as well. Uh, Nipex Step Cut, they, they'll just cut through this like butter. 
So to get the right depth, you there's usually actually a measurement on the, um, yeah, here we go. On the side of the main switch, 17 millimeters of of cable length, that's what it, of copper length. So you could actually measure it and cut it to right, right length. So it should be about that. And then the same with this one. I mean, you can just do it roughly. It doesn't matter too much, but as you can see, these step cuts are just brilliant. So we'll push the main switch back into place. And then here, We've got that cord grip, which will just tighten down on the tails afterwards. Um, we can just tuck them through into the connections. Just got to push that across slightly. There we go. Might need to loosen, loosen that screw a bit. There we go, like that. And what you want is to have all of the copper in the terminal, no excess copper showing. And then, oh, I knew I'd forgotten something. Term, my torque screwdriver. There we go. That's that one. And live. And then this just tightens down to actually clamp those cables in place to stop them from ever pulling out if anyone put any strain on them. It's sort of belt and braces really because you've got this as well. So someone, you know, that's going to be tight. Someone have to pull, loosen that, pull those and undo that in order for the tails to come out. So they're really, really secure, which is great because you never want these, these tails to come loose. Otherwise it could cause a big problem. So that's the line and neutral tails in. We'll get the 16 mil earth cable in as well now. And I usually take that in the bottom below the two larger tails. So you've got the two 25 mil entries there for the larger tails and then you've got the 16 mil entry underneath for the, the earth conductor and that, with a bit of with a bit of force that will go in. There we go, like so. Thing conductor for the consumer unit goes into this terminal here so we just need that to be long enough to, to dress neatly into to that point so that'll that'll do that'll do nicely so we just had a little coffee and um you may have noticed that I have ink all over my hands and I was like, what's been happening? How did that happen? And I realized that I've been using this Sharpie and I had it in my pocket like that with the lid off and it seeped all into my pocket here. And then I've been brushing my hand against my pocket basically and getting Sharpie all over my hand. So the tool of the day, apart from the normal tool of the day is the Sharpie lid 
always put the lid back on the Sharpie afterwards. And let me know in the comments what you use as a marker. I mean, we tend to use Sharpies just because it's easy and they're fairly cheap. You just use them and throw them away. But I have used Pika markers in the past. They're pretty good. I know that some of you guys use some other ones. So let me know in the comments what markers you recommend for working. Um, so the board is about to be mounted. That is the next stage now. So this is all kind of prepped and ready to go. Trunking's on the wall. So what I've got to do is just mount, sort of offer this up against the wall, mark the holes, drill the fixing holes. Then I'm going to strip, strip back all the cables, uh, neaten them up, and then finally mount the board up and dress everything in. So this is tool of the day. This is the Jackery uh, Explorer 240 power bank. It's a 220 watt hour power bank. So far today I've charged two Makita batteries off of it and I've still got 54% battery. So this is an absolute game changer when you're changing consumer units or doing EICRs and you wanna keep the customer's Wi-Fi going, for example. Absolute brilliant thing to have and it's not that expensive. So I'll leave a link in the description where you can get one of these. I did a feature video about this recently as well, which you can see on the channel if you want me to dive and do an in-depth video about that, I'll put that up here somewhere. Um, and you can watch that full video, but this is a brilliant thing and that's tool of the day today. So I'm gonna strip these cables just long enough so that they come into the board, the sheath of the cable comes into the board. I'm gonna do the same with all of those so that they're all pretty much at the same length. And to do that, I like to use this wherever possible. This is a twin and earth cable stripper and it just has a really nice action and it strips the cables properly. So, it's um, quite a good thing to have this. I don't know if it'll work on six mil. Oh, it's a bit tough that. Oh yeah, but it does work, so that's cool. So what I usually do with this obviously is strip it like that and then just use the CPC, just pull, pull on it and just strip it back up to that point. But it just means you've got a nice neat cut on there. And you can just do that with all these cables and then they're all stripped back to the same length. I know some people are against using the CPC. They say like you'll stretch it or something, but I've never had a problem with doing it that way. Um, so I think it's a bit of a myth that, that that's really an issue but this is just quicker. So I use this because it's quicker and it does a, neat, a neater cut than if you were to just strip them with um, side cutters. So before I put the board on, usually what I like to do is as much as possible, just straighten the wires here. And there's a really easy way to do it, just warming them up with your hands, but you need really a pair of gloves or um, or like I'm using now a cloth. This is just a microfiber cloth. If you just rub your fingers up and down on them, you warm them up and then you get them nice and straight and it just makes it a lot easier to dress everything in with really perfect bends. A lot of people ask me like, how do you get your bends and your conductors so neat? And it's just by doing this. This is my trick basically um, that I do. So if you see that, you know, that's got a few kinks in it. But then if I rub my hands up and down it, now that is straight as anything. Um, and that's what you've got to do in order to get them really nice and neat. So for example, with this one, I could just bodge it into the consumer unit like that, but that'd be hard to straighten up afterwards. But if I just run my hand up and down it a few times, like that, that is now straight as a die. And it's like a brand new cable basically. So. It, it will make it a lot neater when it comes to terminating it into the consumer unit. Takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it in my opinion to get a really nice finish on, on the consumer unit. Okay, so what I've decided to do, I'm gonna take the largest um, the highest rated circuits first and go from high to low. That's usually good practice to do. Um, and in this case then what I'm gonna do is straighten each cable one by one 
and then bring it into the board by itself, dress it in, and then move on to the next one. I think that's gonna be kind of the neatest way of doing this. So this is the six mil, which goes to, um, what does it say, tumble dryer. Yeah, so it's like a radial circuit. Actually, it doesn't do anything anymore, but it's potentially a good circuit to use for an electric vehicle charger in the future because it's a, um, a six mil radial that goes to the garage. So we'll just reconnect this anyway. And then uh, I'm gonna put the RCBO in for it, which will just be this one, 40. 40 amp, uh, no actually this was on a 32, the cooker was on a 40, yeah. So we need to remove the buzz bar here so that we can get all the RCBOs in and then we'll fit the buzz bar back in afterwards, or bus bar, sorry, I always get that wrong. People say it's not a buzz bar, it's a bus bar. Um, so we'll do this one and we'll tuck that neutral tail up like that. So what I'm gonna do is dress in all the neutral tails together. So I'll mount all the RCBOs in the correct order and that'll help us to see how much space we've got in the board to dress all the cables. In this case, I'm doing the 32 amp breaker first for the EV charger, future EV charging circuit so that that um, is ready to go if needed. So this one's gonna go in there, then 40 for the cooker, then we'll do the ring circuits, then the radial for the immersion heater, then the lighting circuits. And we just dress them all neatly in to this neutral bar here. All the neutral tails, we'll get them all done first so that they're nice and neat. And then we know how much space we've got left to work with. Uh, and in this case, Hager don't do a miniature 40 amp breaker so that that's why the 40 is larger than this 32 unfortunately um, and it means it's got this little functional earth that you have to put in now some people have asked me before about sleeving this you know it's a it's an earth so does it need green yellow sleeving well no it doesn't because the color cream is the color for a functional earth it has its own identification color so this is how it should stay. In the past, I used to actually sleeve these because I didn't realize, but this is the cream color that it should be. So you just put that into the earth terminal with the particular circuit uh, that, that the earthing needs to go into. So I'll just dab that in there temporarily, and then we'll do that properly later once um, all the other RCBOs are in and that particular circuit is ready to connect. But it's annoy it does annoy me slightly, the, um, the fact that you've got a large 40 and then all the rest are gonna be small. But it is what it is. So where we're at now is all the RCBOs are in and all the neutral tails are dressed in nicely. What I tend to do with the Hager ones is the 6 amp and 16 amp breakers have a 1.5 mil tail on them and it's a little bit flimsy to just screw into by itself. Although it's not fine stranded, it is, it is quite thin strands. So I usually put ferrules on those ones. But the larger ones have a, I think it's like a 2.5 or 4 mil tail on them. So, and they're tinned copper, like the ends are like already crimped. So you don't really need to put ferrules on those. So I don't usually bother with those ones. I just do the 1.5 tails. These are all in now. So I'm gonna start dressing in my first cable, which is this one. And what I like to do is tuck as much slack as I can behind the, the din rail. So I usually tuck it down, sort of loop it down like that and then loop up and over and into the top of the breaker with a nice smooth loop. And I try and get all the loops the same height. So you've got to kind of plan the right height with the first one, knowing that all the others are gonna be the same and knowing that you're gonna need a neat loop as well for the earths. You want it, you know, the earths to come down about sort of this height and, and all be the same height as well. So it's all about planning really and forethought 
So this one is a little bit tricky because it's quite, um, it's got to go above this 40 amp breaker. So what I'm going to do is actually tuck it behind, um, yeah, like that. And then just run that in like so, tuck it behind there and then loop it over and that will be about the right height. And what I'll do is take the neutral as well at the same time. You want to make sure you've got enough length on both conductors because in this case, for example, the neutral is actually shorter than the line conductor. So you don't want to dress the line in first and then realize that your neutral is not long enough to match. So that will just tuck over there and then that should be long enough still that I can cut them both to a nice length. And I just want to make sure that these are nice and straight before I cut them. So those will go in something like that. Obviously the thicker cables are the harder ones to dress. So this is a six mil, um, but that will go like that. And then I'll cut these about there and dress them in. this tool to just strip the ends off. Making sure to not cut into the copper at all. That's important. Like so. Yeah. Get the live into the terminal. Tuck any excess down so that it's the right height. Tighten it up. and then do the same, same with the neutral. This is the most fiddly one because it's got quite a tight gap to get into. So those are a little bit out of sync, but what I can do now is now that they're in the terminals, I can just twist them slightly, bend them slightly. They're flexible enough to do that and get a nice neat loop on them and then hide any other slack behind the, the back of the DIN rail. So that is fairly neat. I'm happy with that. And then that's going to be pretty much our line all the way across. Obviously these ones are going to be a little bit tight loop because you've got less space. And then these ones will be a nice large loop going into them. So you might wonder like, what's the point in actually getting it all nice and neat and everything? Because, you know, you're gonna put the cover on and basically probably nobody's gonna see it for a while. But for me, it's all about a few things. It's about pride in your work. You know, being able to stand back and look at something and go, that is the absolute best I could do. And that looks beautiful and it's safe and it's functional. You know, it's not just about, cause you could sort of chuck it in and it would still be safe and functional, you know, it'd work and it would be safe as long as all the connections are in properly. But it's nice to stand back and feel proud of what, you, of what you've done. And also, if anyone takes a cover off in the future and they have to add a new circuit, and maybe that's me, hopefully my customer's happy with me and that'll be me when, when they need more work doing, it makes my life easier in the future because I can easily wire in a new circuit to this consumer unit without having to sort of wade through a jungle of tangled wiring. And when you do add a new circuit to a really horribly done consumer unit, you do feel like you're polishing a turd a little bit, you know, you're just working with something that's a bit of a mess. And for me, when I see a board like that, I usually just kind of feel like ripping it out and starting again, but usually you can't. Would have been so much better if it had been done nice and neatly in the first place. So for me, that's the sort of reasoning behind when you do a consumer unit, take your time, do it really nice and neatly and dress everything properly and do your absolute best, it's worth it in the long run. And talking about neatness, you know, it really, if you work neat, it contributes to you being a good, a good tradesman, having a good reputation. So being a good tradesperson is not just about like doing good, safe work, but it's about working neatly. 
And then there's the other side of it where it's all about being organized as well, like having good customer service, being organized in the way that you book in jobs and things like that. And that takes us to uh, today's video sponsor, which is Tradeify. So Tradeify is a job management software for tradespeople, including electricians. And it basically helps you to get all your work schedule organized. It's a one-stop platform where you can do your invoicing, you can do quotes, you can price up jobs, you can get your materials lists in there, you can do your scheduling, timesheets, pretty much everything from A to Z of running a trades business. So it's a great piece of software and if you look at the link in the description, you can get 50% off Tradeify for your first three months using my discount code in the description. This, which is the um, numbering of the wires. I've got this cable craft numbering set, which you can see has unfortunately at some point fallen over and everything's got all messed up, but it would take like two decades to actually rearrange this. So I'm just working with it as it is. If you love doing stuff like this, if, you, if you're one of those people who loves organizing these little things, please send me a message, let me know in the comments. I will happily post this to you. You can reorganize it for me and then post it back because uh, yeah this is slightly annoying that it's all jumbled up but the basic idea is to label all the wires with the correct numbers so that if you ever disconnect them from a terminal you know exactly where they need to go back in and in this case with the ring circuits we're labeling the left and right as well so that you know which cables which which is really helpful for ring circuit continuity testing later on so it's a bit fiddly to do, but it creates a really nice result at the end. It looks nice and it's just easier for maintenance and stuff like that. So I do try and do it if I can. Um, basically, you've got this needle that you just put over the wires and then you thread, um, you just thread the numbers on. So you put it over the wire like that. And then, I don't know if, it, if I move that out of the way, and then you just slide it on like that, give it a little pinch so it stays on. So that's R, which is the right side of the ring, and number four, which is circuit four. This is then the left side of the ring, number four, circuit four. Now, different people have different systems of labeling. It doesn't really uh, matter that much. What it matters is that you just differentiate between the various wires so that you know which one's which. So in this case, for the neutrals, I'm gonna do right and left number four and then N for neutral. So this one is the left, I think. Uh, oh no, I've already got a left, so I need to do a right. I need an R. Try and find an R in my jumbled up box. Here we go, here's an R. So we've got R four N. So that's the right hand side of the, of the ring and it's the circuit number four neutral so a little tip for you what i like to do is use this thin sleeving it's i think two mil sleeving and it just makes everything look neater it fits easily over the um the cpcs on most of the cables unless you've got like a 10 mil cable with a four mil um uh, CPC in it then this is fine and what I tend to do is slide it down like that and then you in order to cut it to the right length I just pull on it like that and you can feel the copper inside so you know that that's the end of the copper then I slide it back slightly just by enough of what I want to cut off bearing in mind that I'm going to double it over then I cut it there and then slide it back and that gives me exactly the right amount of length that I need and then I just double it over like this and that's that's nice and neat then the fact that it's such thin sleeving it just makes it a lot easier to dress everything neatly so we're getting there we've just had some lunch so we're about halfway through the day it takes time to do it really nice and neatly as you can see with these numbers and stuff it's quite fiddly but the result is really nice in the end so it is worth it a um, couple of things to say about this. Now, this is a kind of a how-to video, but this is intended for qualified electricians not, or trainee electricians, not for DIY uh, people. 
because changing a consumer unit is not a DIY job. Um, this is notifiable to the building regulations. So after changing a consumer unit, we have to um, self uh, certify under the Part P of the building regulations. We have to provide a building regulation certificate for the customer. We have to provide a full electrical installation certificate for the customer as well to certify that everything's safe, that it's all been tested out, etc. So this is not a DIY job and so nobody who's not a qualified or trained electrician should be doing this. We just wanted to make that clear. So just going to finish these ones up now and then start um, kind of put the trunking lid on and then just start uh, testing. Okay, so consumer unit is done. Now all I've got left is to connect these tails. So I'm using this. Now commonly we call this a Henley block, but that's a bit like calling a vacuum cleaner a Hoover. Henley is a brand. This is a 100 amp double pole connector block, basically. It can take from four mil squared to 35 mil squared conductors, and it's rated at 100 amps. So we're gonna put that here, and then terminate these tails into it, and then the, these are the tails coming out of the meter, which will go in there, and it's essentially just to join it up without having to cut the, cut the meter seal um, and replace the meter tails. So that's just gonna go on there. The main earth conductor here, We'll go down to this main earthing terminal down here, which is already in place. And then we can liven it up and start um, doing some tests. So often it's the finishing touches that make the difference between a good installation and a great installation. And in this case, we've got these stickers that are provided by the consumer unit manufacturer, in this case, Hager. So what we do is we put the pictures on the circuit breakers so you know what's what, even when you've lifted the cover off. And then we label with the brother label printer, the actual cover, we'll label it with individual circuit details so that we know exactly which circuit does what uh, points. I've also used the brother label printer to label the bonding conductors. So we've got the water bond and the gas bond labeled up there. So that's clear what, what is what, and that helps with future testing. So. Again, these little touches, but they make all the difference. So we're all done. Everything is tested and safe and working. Main switch on, all the breakers on and everything's all labelled up, so it's nice and neat. We've got our test label on here to say that it was tested today, and it's due to be done again in five years' time, and a nice little Artisan Electrics bubble label as a finishing touch with our contact details and everything. Take pride in our work here at Artisan Electrics, and I hope you guys do too. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already, so you can join the Artisan movement and see more of our work going forward. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.